name is Nicole. Ciao. And Mama Kay. Hi, everyone. And tonight we have a host pick. It's where one of the mm. hosts picks something, and it doesn't have to be a regular movie. It can be, but it can be a documentary, YouTube videos, whatever they want to find that's free on the internet or part of a major streaming platform. We review it. Uh, but sometimes we just pick a regular movie, and that is what we've done tonight. Well, okay, it was your host pick. What did you have us watch? I picked a regular movie from 2009 called Up in the Air. Up in the Air. And why did you have this? Why did you select this? Uh, why did I select this? Um, this is a movie that I remember seeing when it first came out. And I don't think I've seen it in its entirety, entirety since then. Um, but it came across... Uh, it's on Amazon Prime and it came across a, one of the, you know, you might like this kind of thing. And I'm like, oh yeah. And there's something surprising that happens for me in this movie that I, when I watched it this time, we can talk about that later. But, um, I remember really liking it and enjoying the people were in it. And when I watched it the second time, I was like, wow, there's even more people in here than I remember being in it. So, um, that's, that is why I chose it. Hmm. Well, I've seen this a couple of times before, so when you picked this one, I was like, all right, this is a nice, easy one to, to talk about, because I know this movie pretty well. And Nicole, I know you've seen it at least once. You saw it with, uh, you and I have seen it together, but uh, did you know, did you seen it before that, or? No, just that once with you. <laughs> oh, so this is your second watch through? It was, yes, and uh, I, I feel many similarities of what you just said. I felt the similarities. Okay. An idea from a young new co-worker would put an end to the constant travel of corporate downsizer Ryan Bingham. So he takes her on tour to demonstrate the importance of face-to-face -face meetings with those they must fire. While mentoring his colleague, he arranges hookups with another frequent flyer and develops feelings for the woman prompt him to see others in a new light. Uh, so this stars... Mm whole bunch of people it's uh, george clooney okay. vera formiga anna kendrick jason bateman and then a bunch of other people that you are that are famous uh, show up in small parts so point those out when we get to them 90 percent on rotten tomatoes with a 79 audience score directed by jason reitman who's also made thank you for smoking he made the new ghostbusters remake uh, afterlife not the not the uh all-female reboot the the afterlife one uh do you uh, know young, Juno, Young Adult, uh, Tully. Uh, oh, we've done a movie yeah. before. We did Tully. No, 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 a couple years ago. So there you go. Those are the things. Just right, man. Those are all the things he's made. So if you've seen those, that's like that kind of movie. And we're going to go into spoilers now. If you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon Prime currently. It bounces around the streaming services. But, uh, yep, that's where it is currently. We're going to spoil it no. now. And Mama Kay, you take it from here. What did you? What are you talking? What did you want to talk about in this? What uh, What first came to mind when you saw this? Well, yeah. First of all, I'm glad to know that it sort of bounces around a little because I don't even remember seeing it like coming across. You know, you might want to watch this again. This is a 13 year old movie, and you'd think it would be out there, and maybe it is. Um, I've seen it on I'm Prime before. That it... Okay, I'm glad it's on Amazon Prime now to to watch while you're also doing your Prime shopping, which just ended. Probably. Um, but I think the thing that's interesting for me for this movie, a couple things, um, is the, f the aspect of somebody who just is so focused on himself. The character Ryan that George Clooney plays is so focused on him himself that he has really no tether to anything in life except for his job. He says that he's, he flies he's only home 40 some days a year and home is this terrible little efficiency apartment <laughs> that has nothing in it um, except for some snacks from American it's Airlines. It's got less, also, this movie gives, uh, I'd say it's got less personality than like the Ikea, the Ikea pre-made rooms. Like those are way more vibrant than this, than this place he lives. Oh yeah. Those at least have a vibe. This has a vibe of there's probably like, I don't know, rats playing poker somewhere in, in that apartment. <laughs> and that's the only life in that apartment. It's a clean um, place, but I get your point. Yeah. I mean, it's clean, but it's terrible. It looks like a, it, it looks like a horrible efficiency apartment. Um, 
and it's, you know, he's a man of a certain age. I mean, I'm assuming in this movie he's supposed to be in his mid 40s to or late 40s. I mean, Anna Kendrick does refer to him as an old guy to her boyfriend, which I think is Ashton Kutcher. Who, Anna Kendrick's boyfriend? That. That well. They showed him dropping her off at the airport and he looked like Ashton Kutcher, but. I could be wrong. Um, These are not things I know. Yeah, that's that's you guys. I don't know that stuff. You don't know who Ashton <laughs> yeah. Kutcher is? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that they're dating or whatever. Or like, I don't know behind the scenes stuff. Yes, I know who Ashton Kutcher is. She's saying that the, think... the actor looks like <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. What are you talking about? What do you mean? What am I? Ta- what did you say? <laughs> no, I must have heard you wrong. Which actor? Talk- In the like movie, Ashton? somebody drops her off at the airport and it looks like Ashton Kutcher. Oh, now I know why I don't know what I, you're talking about, because I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? <laughs> she has uh, the boyfriend that drops her off at the airport for her first time with George. The whole reason she lives in Omaha is because she followed a boy. We all I, I this know. Comes across okay. a couple times. All right. You're, yes. All right. We're back on the same page. Okay. That's fine. Yes. Emph- so emphasizing a character who airport. has no screen time at all. <laughs> I don't think she meant I it just, to be this big fucking aside. conversation, Brennan. I think she was just mentioning. <laughs> I know. I didn't. And that's why I didn't that know what you're a... talking about. It was so insignificant. I couldn't even. I didn't know what she was talking about. Oh, gosh. Oh. Anyway, we're establishing that George Clooney is this loner, like hyper loner. Right. And she's uh, we find out she's moved to Omaha, which is terrible. And uh, and the thing that I didn't realize the first time I watched this movie is that when they're showing all these places that the, the the people are going to. So they're going to fire people. They go to big companies and the companies that don't have the balls to, to fire their own people, they fire them. This is right. what their job is. And so all these companies that they go to are smack dab in flyover states. Like or it, it's all Omaha, Nebraska, St. Louis. Uh, I can't think of other ones, but they're all right in the middle of the country and they're all like salt of the earth kind of people. They that go are to Florida fired. sometimes. This is... Texas, maybe. They talk about going to Florida and they talk about things like that, but I don't know that we ever see them doing that. Uh, the, the biggest place they fly to that has cosmopolitan flair is Chicago toward the end of the movie. Mm. Well, Las Vegas. I guess they're in Las Vegas at one point. They go to anyway, so, w- so we're establishing that, <laughs> that Ryan is, um, a complete, you know, he doesn't talk to his family. He doesn't have a pet. He the only he has a neighbor in his where his efficiency apartment is, but she's there for hookups only. Uh, and she now has a boyfriend, so she doesn't have time for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so what change? The, the movie I'm, I'm confused about what actually changes for Ryan because in your synopsis they're like he's you know he finds somebody who's a like minded person and then they just des- and then he decides that he you know wants to change how he lives his life. Well. Oh. That's what he's been doing this whole time. So why now? Like, why? Why? What was the thing? What was the impetus? Impetus? Do you think that made him really want to do this? What? I think he. Why did this yeah, happen? I think it's because of Anna Kendrick's character. Yeah. Um, I think he noticed that one, she uprooted her whole life for somebody and didn't follow her dreams, and he's kind of doing that right now. Like. His dream is to hit the the ten million mile club. Like, wow, what mm-hmm. a what a right. dream that is to have. And um, sounds nice. It's a goal. After he realizes that uh, Natalie decides to go do her own thing and move to um, uh, San Fran and whatever she was doing, um, I think that kind of gave him the spark to say, "Wow, my life is actually pretty terrible. I need to do something about this." And I'm not getting anywhere with this scumbag um, boss that I have. And it's someone earlier in the movie says it's never. Oh, um, Alex, she says it's never too late to start your own thing. And I think that's kind of what it stems from. But at the same time, I mean, he seems kind of like a lost cause. His, it's because his worldview gets challenged in the movie. His world is Anna Kendrick challenges it first by disrupting his travel abilities, and the and his, what he thinks uh, his connection is is like these people that he doesn't know, and he gets rid of them. But like he sees it as like an important thing. He doesn't want to remove the the human connection from it, and that's how. And he's see, he's always seen that as enough. And then you get the woman he actually wants to 
to to be around. Maybe he's just never, you know, never come across another another woman. He's never he's never felt love. He's even says something uh, glib about that at one point. Um, so he, about what, yeah, about what love is. Yeah. So Anna Country gives him a spark. The name and then a lot of little things give him pushes. That the the meeting ver from Mika pushes him going home to the neighbor and he's like, oh, you want to come over? And then the neighbor says, I'm seeing somebody. It's a small little thing where you're like, it's pushing you. She he he sees his estranged sisters and the wedding stuff, and then just little things are pushing him in the direction of. And then by the time it's all gone, when we get to the end and things are pulled out from underneath him, only then can he make his his change. Yeah, but does he, he does he though? Because he's the light in the sky that you see at you know two o'clock in the morning. That's his wingtip flying over. So I like I don't to think think he does. I, I like to think he make he he. Uh, I like to think this is a happy ending. I, I think of it as a hope a happy and hopeful ending. When, I mean, when we get well, there, that's but. that's another thing too. Is this like is this a happy thing? Because both these are both very diametrically opposed choices on how to live your lifestyle. And that's sort of what the movie's about, like lifestyle choices, relationship choices. What this movie left me feeling, I'll just start. This movie left me feeling. Like wait, had you, wait for, had you seen this before? That, I, I can't remember. Me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. You felt, I've are seen you this saying before, you felt differently this time watching it? Cause I'm assuming you liked it. If you picked it and you want to watch it again. <laughs> I think I watched it a lot more on the surface level the first time I watched it. I like George Clooney. Um, I didn't really know Anna Kendrick at the time or Vera Farmiga. Um, I think they were a lot, you know, lesser known actors, but I, I like George Clooney. I like to watch him. I like to hear him talk. Um, and Ivan Reitman is, you know, Jason Reitman's dad. I like his stuff. So this was okay for me to watch then, but I think I was watching it through a different lens this time. Um, and that's sort of what, I think I did, when I first watched it, I did have this overwhelming feeling of sadness through the movie, even though it's a joy to watch. It's a sad, it's a weird, is it a satire? I'm not sure, you know, like, is it a, what kind of weird commentary it is, but it made me feel, as opposed to feeling like both of these lifestyle choices, either of these lifestyle choices would be fine and okay. It left me feeling that both of these choices were terrible. But there's like, not a good answer. The choice, you, 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 I don't think this is a yeah. sad ending. Do you, Nicole, what do you think here? <laughs> yeah, this is really... <laughs> it's really in my head right now. I mean, Anna Kendrick comes out best, right? Because she goes, she actually moves on with her life. But then you've got the sister who marries the guy who maybe really doesn't love her. It's just the next step in what they're supposed to do. I disagree with a lot and of this. George Clooney... I, I think everyone has a happy ending, but all right, keep, keep going. Sorry. I mean, I think everyone has okay, a happy yeah. ending in this movie. Okay. Nicole, what do you think? I think that when I watch this, the only thing that I can think about is that George Clooney's character is Brennan, like, to a T. And what do you mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. Oh, well. Okay, wait, let's clarify that you guys just got married. I did. We did. <laughs> So oh, yeah, I feel like yeah, I can that's say why this. these shows are all weirdly paced out, and every the schedule has been irregular for two months. Because anyway, <laughs> nobody this cares might, about that, Brennan. This that's, might, that has nothing to do with what I know. No one notices next. but me. I'm just saying. Anyway, this okay. might annul everything that just happened, but <laughs> this character is narcissistic. What he has certain goals that, to me, feel like non. Uh, valuable goals I guess in the sense of the 10 million mile club and he's just really striving for that and that is such a Brennan move like uh, if he about? doesn't if he doesn't get to the next level <laughs> points on our Norwegian cruises then it's like the world is over hey no no free sponsorships but unless they right. want well to that free they... laundry I mean Right, well, that's, that's true. The, they give me free laundry valuable... only because of my status, though. Because you know, so that, yeah, that's a valuable <laughs> thing to Brennan is to make sure he's got free laundry on a cruise. Just like the valuable thing to George Clooney is that he gets the silver card with his name on it. Um, I you think see that the Brennan, weight, wait, I'm not the lie. material of the card. I think Brennan would fare well in a <laughs> situation where he is nomadic that way because I don't think that you um need material to be happy 
And it doesn't seem like he needs material items to be happy. Um, no, that's his whole. That's his except shtick. for the card. He and go, he also, <laughs> the way that he would define love, I feel like, is the same way you would define love. There's just going to be some stupid uh, simile that you make up. <laughs> Are you talking to me? No, no, she's, this no, is she's still talking me. about oh. me. Yeah, this is all still. Oh, me. okay. This is, She's still describing oh, okay, how I'm. I asked, "How am I like the main character in this?" And then this, she said, "I'll I tell also you why." And think that's what this that, is all been. <laughs> I also think that his career, <laughs> it's a it's a very draining career. I can only imagine. I would probably not be able to do this job, but I feel like Brennan could put aside emotion to do a task like this, and I think eventually it would come back to haunt you like it does. George, which I feel like it does. I mean, he, I don't think he wants to do this anymore after he realizes that the co-worker quit. I don't think he wants to do this anymore. It's very taxing. But I feel like you would handle this, the job the same way. It's like, it's just a job. I'm just doing my job. So, yeah, I mean, I, hmm. the whole yeah. beginning of this is the guy getting excited that he doesn't want to brag about how many fucking mileage points he has. Because it's so enormous, and he doesn't want someone to feel lesser than, and that is <laughs> to Brennan move. Oh, uh, they're, they're flirting think- when when they're when she, they're over the over the travel miles. I was like, yeah, I I, I feel this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm not gonna lie because I feel that too. I mean, yeah, I have this one. I feel I have this one credit card that I love, and I'm glad we. It's like our major credit card. Oh, because, thank God, someone yeah, understands this it, feeling. It, <laughs> Because it has some heft to it. Yes. <laughs> so I can understand that. But I can't. No, I mean, as far as like the, I mean, I, I think I, I actually have a soul. So um, I don't feel like, you know, in, in the long run. Sure. Who doesn't like a perk? I, I don't disagree. And I don't think that George Clooney's character, I think he is narcissistic in a way. But I think people think of narcissism always as uh, something that's hurtful to other people, and I don't think that that is that's not his goal at all. His goal is to win. Yeah, and, I th- and when I think so of a narcissist, many... I think of someone who sucks. It's the, it's my whole uh, selfish versus self centered argument. I think self centered people are narcissists. They gotta suck other people into their shit. I don't think he needs. Well, maybe by the end he realizes he needs other people, but like as we are introduced to him. He doesn't seek the approval of others. I think that's a quality of I don't think you're selfish at all. That's not what I meant by that. I, I think you're more think selfish than self-centered. I think that you value things that make you feel successful, where I don't think that those things are a measurement Have of your success. Hmm. Hmm. I don't. So you were like I, the Anna Kendrick I would character? love. I would love you just the same if you were a bronze member as opposed to a platinum member, Brennan. Uh, but I. But I don't know. But but what I love myself. Wow, you're the a same. good woman, Nicole. <laughs> but what I love myself the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I can look. Can I look myself in the mirror and be like, "Your point. Your tear is so low. <laughs> you don't even." <laughs> they don't even recognize you when you come in the building of a place you've never been. Oh, but to answer Bronze the question is fully, one cruise. Sorry, I mean, I who could be satisfied? <laughs> well, but so, but do you understand? So what I'm, what I was getting at is that I, I felt, so I did feel a sadness for him. Cause I feel, I don't, I don't see life as a, uh, the, I don't know, attaining goals that don't make sense to me. Like, like a 10,000 or 10 million mile thing. I can understand how you get wrapped up in a goal like that. And he finds when it happens that it's not all that he thought it was going to be. But, um, I, I, so I find that part sad that those kind of things are what makes him tick. But I also feel sad that they're showing this other part of, you know, the sister getting married and the guy gets cold feet and somehow George Clooney, you know, talks him off the, the cliff about that off the ledge and but it still feels like the guy's just going through with it because that's like a next step situation that. so that also makes me feel sad I like i don't know what kind of life we're supposed to have based on this movie what you know what what makes happiness and brennan thinks everybody's happy i, I do think, i think everyone finds their way at the end but you got what'd you say nicole you think 
There's the, no way that Mc, that Vera Farmiga is happy with her life. That's why she's out banging randos while she's on her work. Exactly. She's That's why she's on but the she escape. Has a, That's why he's the parentheses. But she has a system and it works for her. Does it really? If her husband found out about it, would it still work for her? No, that's not part of the he's system che- is the husband finding out. <laughs> that's her whole system well, is her family. That's what she's saying. Don't show up no. to my house. I have a family. You're, you're well, a I know backup that's, piece. You showing well, up is breaking her system. If he if he stays on the road and her family stays at home, she's, her system continues to work and she continues to live the life she wants to live. But see, that's the thing. George Clooney's system isn't hurtful, really, to anyone. Her, her system is hurtful. Yes, yes. By that's, design. That, that's what's good about the reveal is that she is, it, she is not morally gray. She's more like she's morally bankrupt more than him. And then he realizes yes. that he's not like that. That's a great twist kind of thing. Because the the lazy thing to do is to just end it with them ending up together. But that's terrible. That's a terrible ending. This is a great ending because of that I can reveal. sort of buy that now. I can I can feel like that is that is more because I was looking for a turning point. The turning point for me wasn't him going to her house. It was no. It was him reveal, realizing guess, that she wasn't because at the end he realizes he can do as he's. He's successfully emptied the briefcase. He can do anything now, and he's free to do anything now. And he actually feels that way before. Before I don't think he did. Hmm. It's the it's the, Anna Kendrick says it to him early. I, if I had ten million miles, I'd pick a place and just go. And I think that's right. what we, you know. He goes to goes to the airport. He looks at the board, and you hear the little voiceover thing, and that's how it ends. And that's why I think you know. That's a, that's a hopeful ending. That's a I can do anything now. I've reached my goal. That chapter is done. I've I've learned a few things along the way, important of other importance of other people. Uh, you know, it still you know, feels it, like he's going to go do the same thing though, because he, he talks yeah, about he the red light on the air, wing of the airplane. I know you said the wing of the airplane, but like that's what he's been, and that's what you know. That's what he's 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 like the dark knight. He's he's in the night. He's in the wing of the t- tip of the wing. Oh, I don't know what that means at all. I have no idea. What I thought that you were already stretching. <laughs> Both characters give a little monologue uh, about themselves being a thing in the thing, and that's what the comparison is. I don't you know, you're not seeing the comparison points. So I'm the light on your wingtip. I'm the I'm the dark night. I am the I am the the, the shadow in the night. You see how that's the same kind of thing. Nicole, were you surprised to see like Zach Galifianakis in this movie? I actually didn't Dismissive. realize that this movie was this old. I didn't, I, I, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, it's 13 years old. Right. I didn't, we saw it maybe like a year or two ago. Um, I liked it then and it didn't feel like that. Some of the early 2000s movies like can feel really corny, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, it was surprising to see a couple of those people in there. I didn't know Anna Kendrick started her career that early either, I guess, because like I saw her and I, I think I think of her in like Pitch Perfect and stuff, but I didn't. Was really, that after this? I, didn't, I don't think Pitch so. Pitch Perfect was after the after. The, yeah, wasn't it after this? Pitch Perfect was after this. Well, that's what I mean. I didn't. I, uh, it has to have been. I feel like this was really early yeah, yeah, in her you're career. Right. Twenty twelve. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Zach this Galifianakis. Was... I didn't know he was around this much either. And um, when I saw his name on the credits, I was like, oh, I don't remember him in this, and now I know why because he was in it for like three seconds. Yeah, he was in the the very beginning of it, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." And then, um, I guess I didn't remember J.K. Simmons being. Yeah, J.K. Simmons either, gets a little but... bit. Melanie Linsky and Danny McBride are the couple getting married. Uh, Who's yeah. the woman that is uh, his neighbor? Oh yeah, I don't know her. No, yeah, I do. do she's you know her? um. Well, she's she's in Louie. She's in all kinds of like small indie movie kind of stuff. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. That's going to bug me. All right, I'm going to look for that. Wait, but... <laughs> I, I know there's a specific movie that I know her from, too. Hold on a second. She, no, I, as soon as I saw her, I'm like, oh, I forgot she was in this, because she's... Uh, and fucking yeah, Sam Elliott? Yeah, yeah Sam I know. Elliott. Sam Elliott's in this. And the thing is, okay, there's a, there's a thread through this, too, that I want to talk about that maybe also hinges on some of the stuff we've already discussed is... They keep talking. Everything is about loyalty. When people, these people that are getting fired from these companies talk about, um, how loyal they've been to the company. There's loyalty to, um, the, there's loyalty to American Airlines. There's pictures. It comes across at least three times in the film that there's these giant posters of, thank you for your loyalty. And, you know, there's Sam Elliott being, 
I don't know. That's what he says at the end. Captain. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and he comes on at the end. Um, do you think that that's purposeful? Like, is that, a cause this movie t- is, a, is about loyalty. It's about his loyalty to these things that are like Nicole was saying, they're, they're real, but they're not real. I mean, a, a 10 million mile member is, well, first of all, in real life, it's not real. But in the, for this movie's purpose, it is a thing. But it's not really a There's thing. There's nothing like that in like real life. Not, there's not a real, uh, like, Not club. for 10 million. I think there's million mile members. But people are spread out. Nowadays, it's hard to be loyal to one of anything. Because, you know, especially airlines. You're, Maybe you're that's kind what the movie's commenting on. Well, that's why I'm like, there's loyalty, but there's loyalty to all these different things. Anna Kendrick's loyal to her boyfriend. He breaks up with her over text, which I think didn't really hold up because this movie is older. Uh, some of the IT stuff kind of bugged me, um, a little bit, like, you know, him having to get a boarding pass <laughs> to get <laughs> well, on. I mean, yeah. And like, he checks into <laughs> rooms and he slides the key in. He doesn't tap it on the thing. I'm just like, eh, we're already kind of, also- this is already a little old. Why is he carrying around old keys that don't open the door? That those I don't think those are it's, good jokes. It's like a um, um a, a humble brag to Vera Farmiga that he's got all these cards. It's one of it's one of those things. He's um proud of how I many guess. hotel rooms he stayed in, just like he's proud of the points. It's useless. Maybe goals. you're right. I just think once you're done with the key to a hotel room, you either give it back or throw it away. Like you don't keep it. There's no reason to have it in your well, that's if not he true. Has all these... I will tell you, I keep keys Uh-oh. because when I go to the casino and I don't spend the night there, I got my old key and it lets me get into the pool the next day. <laughs> we just use that in. Uh, we weekend. just use that for uh, discounted parking for uh, in a couple months. Wait a minute, a key from like casino. from like a previous visit? Yeah. Yeah, you take a room key from a previous visit or a, or a casino what? key or whatever your whatever the card is that the place has and you flash it to whatever okay. attendant you're trying to get something from and you, you get it. Okay, that's that makes sense. And then I, I just, never think to do that. They tell they say write your room number down and your last name, so I just put Jones and I'm in room 5314 <laughs> and I'm fucking at the pool all day. Yeah, they're not going to check. I had no By idea the time you they guys check, were so such scammers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not telling you what yeah, Jess isn't even on. <laughs> Jess is a bigger scammer than us. She she like proactively lies to companies to get to get things from them. But uh we don't have to talk about any of the specific things she does. Jesus. <laughs> well these people also lie to get into like the tech conference with who was there, young I MC know. or Young MC. I have yeah. Well yeah, I haven't even <laughs> said yeah, I love this like I love this movie. This is like a top hundred all time movie for me. I absolutely adore this movie. Oh, I, okay. And I relate to like like I yeah, I very much relate to a lot of the characters in here and a lot of this the situations there and like the motivations and the the morals everything every and lifestyle choices this all this all is extremely relatable material to me every all the characters are different that's why i'm that's why i'm wondering then why it doesn't make you sad because it does feel almost hopeless to me no it doesn't feel that way that's so weird well i feel completely opposite i feel like this is such a positive movie for like do it like do being your own person and doing and doing your own thing i, th- I think that's what is this it a woman man thing nicole I, it has to be because i feel the same way that you do you feel negative at the end of this not negative like i didn't enjoy that movie it sounds like we all like the movie at, no if, but yeah it's but not like, about enjoying the movie yeah you feel like at the end it's a it's more tragedy than triumph the only person know, that comes out ahead is anna kendrick in it because she gets her dream job okay so you guys seem to agree I there agree. why is anna kendrick come out ahead and we kind of already said, like, why, why is she the only one who comes out ahead? She got out of guys? a bad situation with that shitty boyfriend, she, and she had to uproot her life and go live in this piece of crap place. Now she gets to go do her own thing. Meanwhile, George Clooney has nowhere to go. He's got miles to spend. Wow, big deal. He's going to go find some place to be homeless. And or that's what's also a, funny. He's essentially homeless in this in it for for yeah. a portion. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. gr- it's kind of great actually. Like, I, all right, I, you're you're just we're <laughs> on two way different wavelengths here. I guess. Well, though, I, the thing is, is I can I can I can vibe with that too. Though. I feel like there is something about being light and shedding things and not having you know. Yeah. Part of his thing is he's he's doing this thing with a backpack, which is you know you put all your shit in a backpack and it becomes too heavy to carry. So you get 
you got to like slim it down to just get the things that you need. Wow. Yeah, he's backpack. really those... his backpack must be really heavy that he hasn't seen his his sisters in ten years. Wow. Oh, he doesn't even have. A, I mean, he has a backpack, but metaphorically, he doesn't even have a backpack. I mean, he's he's got nothing. No. So, but I but I understand that because the thing that a lot of times things are the things that hold you down and keep you keep you rooted when you probably should be moving along i like that anna i think anna, anna kendrick also nicole i think the same way that she she wins because she actually is the one who when they go into these places and they're telling people that they're going to be fired they're not saying they're fired they're like remember the time when you wanted to do something really cool well now this is your opportunity to exactly. do it you don't have to work for the man anymore right and she actually takes that i mean she doesn't get fired but she quits the job after she takes her own advice people that she fired commits suicide she takes her own advice and she does the thing and i mean she still winds up probably working for the man but it's what she wanted to do in the first place so she uh, this movie is great in that all of these things make sense to me um but it just still doesn't leave me satisfied I, because i do i i do feel this o- overwhelming sadness for some of the characters positions vera farmiga i don't she's exactly what i imagine the classic woman who has to do everything this is what i think about her i think that since george (laughs) showed up at her door she's now have she now has this huge sense of guilt overwhelming sense of guilt and her marriage is probably going down the tank because she probably can't deal with the fact that he showed up and she's realizing that her life actually sucks I disagree with I don't with think that that's true, though. Completely. Because yeah. they show, there's a scene afterwards where she's in the car and she's like, I'm yes. being a grown up about this. And if you still yes. want to hook up, call me. Exactly. So that's why that that's... I know that Vera Farmiga is fine at the end of this movie. She knows what she's doing. She's fine, she's but her accepted. family is not fine. I like her character then. I think she's well, yeah, you don't have to... gross. Yeah. Well, she's, a, she's basically another man. But I think that's the reveal, though, is the whole time we're supposed to believe that it's like the it's the mute cute rom-com kind of thing and at the end like formula has conditioned us to think you know he'll realize she'll realize they'll get together but the reveal is not that the reveal is that she was even worse than we thought she's and she's like and and she's totally fine with it and she's not she, like she she's it's a casual hook up to her and nothing else and even and this doesn't even ru- like you said at the car scene it doesn't ruin it for her she's like yeah if you want to stop being a baby you can come and hook up with me again i don't like that's fine but like yeah just let me right. know and then she hangs up and then that's the last thing we see of her that's the that's our last impression of that character so that's why i don't think it's a sad ending for her yeah her scheme might fall apart eventually or maybe years down the line she'll realize what a horrible type of thing she's done but i don't i don't think that's likely it seems like she's made peace with how she is i don't know if it's a sad thing for her i think it's when you look at the situations it's a, a sad for her family yeah for her family it's bad for george clooney's sister and her husband i don't see that ever being a great relationship and see it in the beginning i have a trouble seeing danny mcbride in any sort of functional relationship anyway so he was cast perfectly but they got the real estate company that. Um, yeah, he's a scammer, and and they're you know, it's gonna wind up poorly. That's exactly what the wife wants, right? Right. You know what really irritates me? Whenever there's someone like in a movie and they're getting married, and the one has cold feet and they run away, why is why does somebody always try to talk them back into it? Why are you talking someone back into it? Why don't you talk to the person who was left behind and say this is the best thing that ever happened to you? <laughs> like, wh- what is he trying to save here? Interesting. I would be. I would be That's like. A, I disagree. With I never want to talk so to you again. And ah, that's interesting. I don't want someone to be talked into well, that's- it. Fuck you. That's goodbye. the thing. That's the thing that makes me sad about that is that I don't now I there now there is a big seed of doubt just in my man, my mind and I don't know any of these people. What kind of doubt is there not just in the bride's mind and the groom's mind, but like everybody else who's involved with that wedding, you know? Um, it's awkward. Awkward. I don't know that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be tough to tough to get over. But I, I, I mean, interesting. These are these are interesting. I have never thought of any of these people's lives ending tragically. This all, everyone ends up fine for me. <laughs> everyone is not fine. The kids are not all right. 
<laughs> no, because, okay, this is what I see when I see that scene, when the cold feet scene. I see that we are watching our protagonist uh, uh, shed his his skin and uh, be vulnerable and try to reach out to someone who's like a, a family member in like a in like a distant way. But like he doesn't reach he doesn't reach out to family members or friends. He doesn't do that. This is a step in his character growth to help someone out that way. And then when they get back together, it's the show's like, oh, look, you care about your sisters and your family and being together look you can you can be a part of this and then that's when we get the happy montage of the of the wedding everyone's dancing he's dancing with Vera Farmiga you think things are going well I, I just I, I that's what that's what I thought of when I saw this whole sequence go down is is uh, our main character has grown and he's saved the day not that uh this horrible <laughs> marriage has begun I mean this that's our man woman thing. i think so too and i think and i can see it from that perspective that i and i can see it from george clooney's perspective that yeah he he saved the day um but i also I feel, feel like, like that's he the movie what the movie's telling I, us like based on the language of the movie i don't know if that's true though because i don't think george believe george clooney's character believed in the stuff that he was saying to him especially at that time i mean maybe he was turning the page at that point a little bit but <laughs> It's a little fake it till you make it, but like I understand that. Yeah. Also, would you take advice from a loner that has never been married and has no intention of being married? Well, and that's so. where you know if he looks like George Clooney. says that, <laughs> or not, uh, Danny, she, she sorry, McBride. Danny McBride. <laughs> you got the wrong McBride. I really that's would. probably I not a that's probably not a common mix up. Uh, have the McBride same last name. Please stop. <laughs> Probably not super. Um, um, do you have any other points? There's yeah, some what weird, a little bit we of weird here? things in this, and I, um, I did a little research after. But in the beginning of the movie, he's on the plane, and there's this. The flight attendant comes up and says, "Cancer," and he's he's like, "What?" Yeah, can- and then he, she's like, "Cancer," and we can everybody can hear it plain as day, "Cancer," and then finally she's like, "Would you like the can, sir?" Yeah. And I don't know what that means. And apparently there's a book that this, you know, the screenplay was written on. And um, there is a background story that George Clooney's character actually has cancer. And that's what sort of, you know, manifests all these sort of changes that happen. Uh, they must have taken that out for the movie because it would have added probably, what, an hour to this movie? If you have a cancer subplot going through this right. whole thing? But it seems to make a little more sense uh in the change it's a little more motivating yeah. i suppose yeah it's a little more change motivating but again I, I guess maybe it's just because his performance is so good uh, and or maybe it's because i like the banter so much but I, I never question the motivation in this movie these people everyone seems like real people to me as far as like behavior yeah. goes. and that's what the very fear for me to- twist is so good is because it doesn't portray betray anything we've seen before it's still in line with the type of person we think she We've we've been this whole time. It's just a different context, and now we can see the, the yeah. truth. I think everybody. Wait, why would they leave that scene in then if they weren't going to go to the cancer? Well, room? apparently because uh, Ivan Wright or sorry Jason, Jason Reitman just thought it was really funny. It's like a really funny play on words. Oh. It, oh. it's a it's a moderately humorous. Joke. I feel like I feel like, like it sits, sticks out like a sore thumb because everything else in here is not jokey like that. There's no like Pratt slapstick kind of humor it's just yeah that's no there's bad. no yeah there's that that type of humor is not uh the type of humor that's in the rest no. of this the rest of the humor comes from the situation from the the weird little situations yeah, yeah or the yeah the, 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 the specificity of and, the situation and also yeah. i read that oh. some of the people that um were the ones who were being fired were actually people who had recently been fired they weren't actors they were people who recently I got that feeling ben too fire, the, in the credits, or not at the credits, but like right at the end, right? All through the movie, anybody who wasn't interacting specifically with um, George Clooney and Anna Kendrick or anybody else, Jason Bateman or whatever, um, those were people who had recently been fired and they invited them in saying that this was going to be a documentary about the recession or something like that. And they w- Right. Like they do the. Sorry, I was just saying, because they do like the little mini montages. Yes. But I was saying at the very end, they have a part where they go back to a yes. couple of those people, and it's 
Again, again, maybe you're reading it as some dark omen. I was like, oh, look at these kind of hopeful statements they're giving. Because at the end of this movie, it's a hopeful ending. <laughs> but apparently, you guys are at the uh, maybe did not feel that way. But I thought that's what that was all part of this this thing of like rebirth and moving on to your next stage in your life because you're confronted with this thing. Maybe the cancer would have been a good yeah. keep. I guess it just would have been too yeah. long. Now that I'm really thinking about it. Or they it. wouldn't have had to have... Because, ha- yeah, this happened during the crisis. Yeah, and, and so they wouldn't have had to have sense. gone to, through as many people. They did a fair amount of people who can't... And they basically told the people, you know, act however you want. You, t- say what you wanted to say when you were fired or, you know, that kind of thing. And, yeah. and I, I think it was really interesting. There was a lot of it. Um, there was a, also a lot of flying over because you know you're up, you're up in the air so i guess i mean there are things that probably could have been cut for a cancer arc it's in the title. this was a perfectly timed movie i think i don't i don't think so i think 45 minutes minimum you would have had to have had with a cancer arc and that pushes this over two and a half hours Can't well 2009 what if they just ended it with him at the doctor's office and it was like uh you saw a clip of his diagnosis yeah or something? i'm okay with that it might have been it might have worked as like he secretly has it the whole time, and then at the end, it's like a twist at the end. We see it, and then maybe a couple flashbacks, and we realize, oh, he was not at a client that day. Well, he was at the doctor's office just that day. Leave and, it, uh, can't they just leave it up to your own imagination? Why do, they, why do we need to see right. all that? Isn't that a weird ending, though, to not have it at all, and at the end, just be like, oh, and you have cancer? Well, no, I think it's, no, you don't say anything. I think Nicole's right. Like, you can have, if you're going to have that cancer, can, sir, you know, here, here, would you like the cancer in the beginning? You can end it like that. Right. And then it makes sense why he, his, the way he plays with things, the way he's not like braggadocious about all the things that he does, even though he's, you know, his goals are, you know, what they are and his, and, and the things that he, you know, likes to do are perks of life, of his life, but that he's doing that and he's not bragging about it because he's no, he knows he's dying. Like. There's no point in bragging about it. I think that's. I think it's. It feels like too much. Eh, it could too have been. much stuff has to happen. Well, it sounds like that's why they left yeah, it out. Yeah, that's that's probably. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, it works because again, I still think I, I love this movie. I think it's excellent. I, the, uh, my my smallest hang ups are lulls a little uh, in the in the Danny McBride uh, Melody Linsky scenes, just because that stuff's it's not as funny or like snappy as the rest. It's Ooh, the sad the as hell stuff, but um. <laughs> It's all sad. Yeah, I, I do not feel sad at any point. At any point during this movie, do I feel sad? Like even in the firing scenes, I'm like, I'm, I'm. It's more, it's more teeth licking. Like it's enjoyable. It's, it's tasty. Okay, none dialogue. of that. No, it's, it's almost Sorkin, Sorkin. No, that's also sad. You're just heartless, man. <laughs> Like the scene with him and the three of them, it's the two of them and J.K. Simmons. That is awesome. That is such a well executed. That's scene. okay and because like, that's the three. At the end of that scene, I'm. Sm- I, I I think that worked out well because I mean I like the way that they played into, you know, you can now go do the thing that you really wanted to do in your life before you had to settle. Even though theoretically, and it shows he really that can't George Clooney does his homework. His family. Yeah, he's good at his job. No, of course it's it's he's it's, great at his job. That's what's nice. Is like it's. An, it's nice words, but like, yeah, he he takes the time. That's what he's trying to teach Anna Kendrick because he shows the the time to stuff. But that's what also makes him interesting is that he takes the time to like learn all these people, but he doesn't want close relationships. And and his view is challenged, and he changes at the end. But again, I don't think it's like there's not there's like a it's it's a very find your own path kind of thing is as I get from this. Yeah. And it's morally gray. I like the moral grayness of the movie in in general. Like the whole movie's about firing people. There's people cheating on each other. There's there's breaking up. There's Jason Bateman. We even talk about him. He's the biggest tool in the world. Like it's it's a very morally gray movie, and I I like its navigation of the of that. I like the way it's played. I think everybody did a really stellar job doing it. I mean, Jason Reitman did a good job directing it. Um, it's. Interesting to me. It's my favorite Jason Reitman movie yeah. by far. So me. do you know what the my problem watching it the second time was? What I had an issue with is that I re- <laughs> this is what I remember happening in the movie is that Anna Kendrick fires George Clooney from his job. I also re- I also thought George Clooney got fired in this the, this time watching it. 
And I've seen this multiple times. Was there another point? Was there another piece of this movie? Because I remember her firing him. I, I don't remember her. Effect going on. It is a little Mandela effect. I don't remember her firing him. I remember him being bad at the thing, which he was. They showed him struggling with the new packet and like kind of Maybe like old man doesn't know technology. When he told joke. him to stop. The, he was done flying. Right. That's what I thought. I thought Jason Bateman at one point fired him in in my in my mind's eye. That's what I remembered, and that's why at the end he flies and he's at the lowest point. And that's when Sam Elliott comes out. You've won your 10 millionth because uh, the girl he thought, you know, that's blown up. I thought he had just lost his job, but I guess not. I guess at this point he's just disillusioned with his job. Anna Kendrick's moved on, so he's did- at his lowest point. But then he achieves his goal. Yay. Why do we both remember that, though? That's weird. Yeah. You don't remember that, Nicole? You as school. I'm watching the movie, no, it's, a- it's affecting the way I'm watching it. Because I'm thinking, oh, when does it get to the point where... She fires him. I didn't like, fully. I know it's going to happen, and it makes me sad. It did. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't take over for me because e- even in my head, where I thought that's what happened, the Vera Farmiga part is so much superseding that it like I was. I was waiting for that part at that point, not the. But yeah, yeah, and that stood Weird. out more for me this watch than it did the first time too. So that as out of place of or like memorable. It just it was more. Uh, it felt like it took up more of the movie than I remember it taking up. Um. Oh, just his relationship with her? Yeah, like the part where they're sitting, where Anna Kendrick gets dumped by her boyfriend, and they're sitting in the bar, and they're sitting there like parents across from her, you know, and she's being... Yeah. I, 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 can't wait to l- I would love to look like you in 15 years. There's a lot of, like, little funny <laughs> writing bits like that. Yeah, that's a that's a good piece. I like that he, that she, that um, Alex, you know can see things differently than Ryan does for Natalie. Like Ryan doesn't really see Natalie very well, but you know, Alex does because she was probably her at one time. So, and I like their lists. Like she gives her like the, you know, the, the, she checks all the boxes of, of a perfect uh, husband or whatever. And then she gives her version. (laughs) And then, then, yeah, and again, she gives that's just a depressing, (laughs) that's what they go uh, steal badges and party, which again, it feels like a, it, it, that whole part i'm just like i never even think about this part but like they're all hanging yeah. out she's doing karaoke the night ends with them having to get off a boat and like go back to a hotel it's i don't all remember very, any like, of that yeah i know it's all but it's and it, it, it it's not played for you to remember it it's played almost like half montagey backgroundy stuff which i like right. it's like it's 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 a lot of like oh yeah remember that one time on that crazy business trip kind of thing like and that's right. happening in the background while the you know the human connection stuff's happening with young mc this is a great movie yeah. Great movie. Yeah. All I could well, think about thanks. the whole time was that Brennan's dad was very reminiscent of George Clooney in this film, and it was really bizarre. <laughs> and they say um, his head grew three of the sizes that day. <laughs> so, Nicole texted, yeah, Nicole texted me uh, this, this evening and was like, there was a really strange George Clooney Snyder vibe, and I was like, and while I was watching the movie this time, I also picked up on that and I was like, I would never, if somebody said, who does your husband look like? Like what celebrity? It, George Clooney would not be <laughs> hey, you on said the that, list. Not me. Well, he wouldn't be on the list. I, I'm not really well, sure. Who would you who, say? I don't know because you look like people like you look like George. What's his face? The comedian. Um, Lopez. George Lopez. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, little George but you also look just little like Gabriel that. Iglesias. He. A little Not Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah. yeah, you look like maybe you could be part of like some Hawaiian mafia kind of situation. Um, <laughs> Pacific Islander. But, yeah. yeah, but. And you do look enough like your dad, but I would never. I'm, I'm very never ambiguous looking. <laughs> George Clooney. And then, but I saw it in this movie and I don't know whether it was a a look that he was giving or when he was talking about his eyebrows or what <laughs> <laughs> but so strange also, that we both thought that so strange and then to have to tell him and then to have to live with him after this is just and he's all, yeah excellent uh, yeah. yeah well <laughs> i'm i'm a lucky i'm a lucky girl so that's right yeah, nicole is like is he gonna think it's it's an insult like a, like like oh you're not no, i didn't say George that Clinton. i said is uh, no i said is he gonna never let this go if i say this <laughs> 
That's what I said. Oh, no I, no, I was like, he's going to love it if you say that. <laughs> yeah, and he's probably not going to ever let it go. You're right. It's going to be it's going to be a forever thing. So just like, <laughs> can't be a Snyder unless you eat a rib. So <laughs> we all recommending up in the air then. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's got to watch it now. Cause we have, there's such a psychological, social relationship, uh, thing that we've spent on it. I bet you that nobody else who's ever reviewed this movie. I, I should do a Instagram poll. Do you think up in the air is a happy ending or a set or a, well, how, how do you want your ending? I will, I would say it's got a hopeful ending. How would you categorize the ending? What adjective would you use or adverb, whatever the hell for George Are Clooney? Asking us? In general, what in the end of this movie, I say at the end of this movie, it's a hopeful ending. How would you categorize the end of this movie overall? Mm. Um, I think it's kind of lame. Like he is a lame <laughs> person. He has nowhere to go, nobody to be around, nothing to do. He's just gonna go fly around and fuck around I feel in like... random towns. <laughs> I feel like he's going to change his life a little bit. I feel like he is probably going to have a little bit more to do with his, his family, his, his, you know, his sisters and such. Um, but yeah, I think, I think he's, I think he's changed. I, and I find, I find that hopeful. Um, the, so the you other would agree parts, with me with my hopeful ending? Hopeful ending for him. I still don't feel like there's anything redeemable about the Vera Farmiga situation or the sister marrying Danny or Chi McBride, whichever one she chooses. So Anna Kendrick, <laughs> good ending. George Clooney, you know, pretty good right. ending. The other two, Chi. it's trash. Trash for both of them. Hmm. Right, watch well, it anyway. Your mind there you go. Mary. Up in the air on Prime. Recommends from all of us. And yeah. that was the host pick for this time period, whenever we're Phew. in, whenever you're hearing this. Because we've got more theater stuff. It's the theater time of the year. And everyone's going to start thinking about your end of year superlatives. We got the draft and we got the uh, top five <laughs> show. So start, yeah, yeah, start mulling it oh over. It's already goodness. October. I know. We've been doing the show for like f- four years now, something like that. Holy cow. Yeah. And look at us. Well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for being on for Up in the Air. You guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Until next time, this is Brennan signing off saying thanks for listening and enjoy your movies. Thanks for listening to Films with the Women in My Life. If you enjoyed being a listener in our life, please rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Keep up with the latest from the show on Instagram at Brennan underscore pod host, on Facebook at Films with the Women in My Life, and on Twitter at Films Women Pod. Finally, you can email the show with questions and suggestions at Films with the Women at gmail.com. Original music for the show was created by Ian Burke and Chris Iwanek. Original artwork created by Nicole D'Alessio. This show is produced by Brennan Snyder. Thank you again for listening and enjoy your movies.